Good morning, everyone. Hope everyone had a blessed uh, Saturday. Uh, today's Sunday. Um, let's get started with a word of prayer and then we get ready to start our devotional. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for letting us have a good weekend. We thank you for walking with us. We thank you for changing us and molding us. Father God, forgive us if we have done anything that's not of you. Please forgive us if we said anything that, that could be cruel and ugly and, and not something that we should say. But Father God, we ask you every day to to be the gatekeeper of our heart, be the gatekeeper of our mouth. Help us be better Christians each and every day. Father God, we love you and we thank you. We ask you to bless the people that are reading the devotionals and bless the people that are hearing it in Jesus' mighty name. Let's get started. Okay, so the verse of the week is James 1.22. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourself. Do what it says. Okay, verse of the day, Proverbs 4 and 4. He taught me and said to me, let your heart hold fast. My words keep my commandment and live. Topic, holding fast. Affirmations. I am holding fast to God. I am clinging to God. I am following my shepherd. I am stronger with God. Thoughts. I was reading one morning the word of God and the word whole fast stuck out to me. It was as if it was standing off the page. And I knew then that is what the Holy Spirit wanted me to teach on holding fast. So what does it mean? How do we hold fast? How can we apply it to our life? Holding fast, remind, remind, remain tightly secure. Do we allow the opinions of others to change us? Do we allow our emotions to change what we sh should feel? Everyone has a pen. Everyone has something to say. But do we hold tightly to what we feel is correct? Or do we let what, what's going on change us? A lot of times someone can say one thing and it throws our pens into a loop. Have you ever had that to happen? You were so strong-minded and holding on to what you felt. And one person can say one thing and just the way and, and your thoughts become just like the waves on a beach to a sand castle. We crumble. Why? Because we aren't holding tightly to what we feel. Deuteronomy 10 to 20. You shall fear the Lord your God. You shall serve him and hold fast to him. And by his name, you shall swear. This word can also look like this. The word says here to serve God and to hold fast, which means to cling on to him. Many people don't like the cling, clingy people because those type of people are, uh, love hard. They love they love over beyond what they should, but they won't let go no matter what you say. They won't let go. And that's what God is looking for from us, us to be clingy to his word, us to be clingy to our, to our life with him. God wanted the Israelites to know if you cling to me, if you walk with me and not against me, I can give you what you need, which is your enemies out of your way. But they must let go of the idols, let go of anything that wasn't of him. Deuteronomy 11, 22, for if you be careful, do, do all this commandment in that, in that I command you to do, loving the Lord your God, walking in his ways and holding fast to him. When we re really and fully hold fast to God, that means we are devoted to God through ups and downs, heartaches, heartbreaks, even when it's, it seems unfair. So many of us hold fast or cling to God through the storms. How many of us hold tight to God even when we are discouraged? I know this is hard to do, but when we cling to him and we stay grounded with him, God will be able to show us what we need to do to get through. Are you ready to stay grounded in God? I can say what I love to do is get my Bible and ask the Holy Spirit to guide me and teach me. And I draw right into him and I wait for him to speak because some of us are holding on. But are we listening? We are clinging with God. But are we listening? We can. Hold, we can all hold on to God, but are we listening for his voice? First Thessalonians 5 and 1 says, but examine everything carefully. Hold fast to what is good. We have to be careful and take everything into account because before we know it, we will think we are walking in righteousness and that we are walking in holiness. We aren't because we haven't had God to examine our heart. So when you feel something is off or doesn't feel right, ask the Holy Spirit, is this good? Is this something I should be doing? 
I don't want to lose you by pursuing this. We have to stop pursuing false happiness and joy in things that won't last. Be careful in doing this. Today, if you're holding fast or clinging to God, make sure you're doing what he wants. Make sure you're not losing sight of God and living in a legalism way. Because when we do this, we are clinging to God. We are clinging to the ideal that what we do will get us closer to God. When that's not how it works, we must let go of everything like this and anything that will cause us not to cling to God. Everything that's within you needs to hold fast to God. Prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for letting us cling to you. Thank you for allowing us to love you and be in your presence. If it's anything in our lives that's not of you, please remove it. Lord, we want to be closer to you. We desire to know more about you. Lord, we ask you to open our eyes and, and ears so we may be closer to you. Show us what we are doing wrong. Help us to lean on you and not our own words. Lord, we thank you for good and, and for being a good and mighty God in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Reference John 12 and 50. And I know that his commandments is eternal life. What I say, therefore, I say at this say as the father has told me second timothy 3 15 how from childhood you have been acquainted acquainted with the scarce writings which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in jesus christ second timothy 3 15 deuteronomy 6 and 6 and these words that i command you today shall be on your heart deuteronomy 6 and 6 further reading jeremiah 14 11 16 and 15 first thessalonians 2 9 through 3 and 13 Psalms 51 through 19, Proverbs 25, 1 through 5. Holding fast. Um, so we all know that is is some people that will wear the title as Christians. We have talked about this before, but they don't live out to being Christ-like or having Christ-like mind. That's just like holding fast. You can hold fast to God, but if you don't know his desires, for you and your life, you're holding and you don't know which way you're going. That's why we have to ask of God, I'm holding on to you, but which way you want me to go? I'm holding on to you, but what do you want me to do? He He gave me this podcast to do, but and he gave me the devotionals to, to, to sit out. But if I don't know what he wants me to do with it, I'm just out there doing whatever. And we have to not be out here doing whatever because we be, could be doing good in our eyes, doing good to everybody else's eyes. But what about God's eyes? That's why we have to ask of every day, God, help me to hold fast to you. Help me to hold on to you in every way possible. So when we hold fast and we hold down, that means remain secure. That means we don't allow nothing to change us. That means we don't allow opinions of others and what others think of you. If they think that you're not the best Christian, if people think you're not really a Christian, don't let that move you. You hold on to the fact that you are who you are in Christ and you know your identity. But if you allow people to get in your head, you're just stop trying. You're a give up. And God doesn't want us to give up. He wants us that every time we slip or every time something comes our way, he wants us to hold fast to him, hold close to him, because he's the only one that can bring us out of the storm. Yeah, we have mom, we have dad, we have family. A lot of people are like, I have a strong support system, my mom, my family, and they list all these people. But where's God at and all that? You know, well, where's God at? We have to learn that our life revolves around him, not him revolving around us. It just doesn't work like that. But a lot of people get confused with that. I can remember when um, I first gave my life to God, I knew that he called me to do something. And I knew that I would have to do it, <laughs> whether I had fear in me or not. And um, I remember going to a bunch of people, asking people, you know, could you pray for me and tell me exactly what God want me to do? And at the time, a lot of pastors that I knew didn't want to do that. And in my mind, I thought it was cruel. I actually thought it was very wrong of them. And as I grew in God, I grew in the word, I realized, and the Holy Spirit showed me, I was holding on to them to show me when I needed to go to God. And I knew I needed to go to God, but I wanted an instant answer. Because, you know, sometimes God doesn't give us exactly what 
we're going to do the blueprint of everything. He just wants you to walk. Just just walk with him. That That's what I've learned. Just walk. Don't ask him, hey, what is what are we about to do? No, just walk with him. And as we're walking with God, he will reveal his plan. And as I walk with God, he revealed his plan. And he slowly gave me what he wanted me to do. And as I got little tidbits of it, I realized, okay, if I would have learned immediately what God wanted me to do, I would have never done it. I wouldn't because I was so afraid of not being good enough. So let, let me tell you something. If you're in this moment in your life, whether you're older, younger, wherever you are in your life, and you don't feel good enough, ask God to take that feeling away. Because to believe it or not, I'm going to tell you a secret. None of us are good enough. All of us have fallen short. That's the secret. We all aren't good enough. And if you keep believing that you of all people in all the world isn't good enough for God, you're going to miss out what he has for you out of fear. And sometimes it's scary to hold fast and hold tight to God out of fear because we don't know what's ahead. And I can understand that. But that's the thing. He, he wants you to lean on him. He wants you to. Let's take this for instance. Okay, we all have bought an apartment or uh, have gotten an apartment. So they ask you to put maybe 50% of your rent down or all your rent down, you know, first month rent, I think last month's rent. I think that's how it goes. So we have to put something in to get what we want, which is the apartment. That's what we have to do with God. Not money. We need to put our heart on the line. We need to just... I tell people free fall for God. You ever seen people that bungee jump and they're at the end of the platform and you can tell they're shaking, but it's something they really want to do. And they jump and you see them jump and they're heading all the way down, 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 down. And all of a sudden this bungee jump, this bungee rope pops them back up. That's what we have to do. We have to free fall. We have to believe that what we give, which is our heart, which is our time, which is our energy, which is everything, every piece of us, we're giving to him that he's going to give something back, which is eternal love, which is eternal mercy and grace. I can say that I need love. I was broken when I um, came my life to God. I was broken. I was broken so many ways, mentally, emotionally. But when I met him, and I took that leap of faith, hoping that he'll love me like I love him. And he did. And I know there's someone out there that's scared scared that he won't love you from what you did or he won't love you the way you want to be loved i promise you he will but you gotta free fall you gotta give him everything you got and every day i give him every day everything i got and sometimes i don't make the mark and sometimes you won't make the mark but it's about trying It's about trying and giving him everything because he will give it to you. He will change you in ways that you never thought that you'd change. You never thought you'd be that person and you will because you love him so much. So today, if you feel like you can't hold fast or you can't free fall for him, just know he's waiting for you. You have to let go, hold fast to him, and jump. I pray you all enjoy this devotional. Um, remember, Jesus love you. I'm sorry for crying. <laughs> I'm sorry for crying, but it's just, um, it touches me when I hear people say that they're not good enough because that's the way I feel. I feel sometimes I'm not good enough for anyone. And, um, That's something he's working on me with, is knowing that I don't 
have to be the best. Neither, none of us do. We don't have to be the best. We don't have to be the smartest, the beautifulest, the, the one person in the room with all the money. We just have to be us. And I know as someone out there that feels like, why will he love me? Because he created you and you're beautiful inside and out. And don't let no one steal that from you. Don't let no one make you feel that you are the worst and you're not. You're not. He loves you. And remember that as many times as you slip, as many times as you fall, get up. He's saying that to someone today. He's like, get up. Get up. Come back to me. I love you. I love you with all flaws and all. And that's one of the things I love about him is that he loves me with every flaw that I have. And he loves you with every flaw that you have. Every shortcoming. He loves you. <sighs> sorry. Oof, sorry, y'all. But remember, he loves you. And remember, I love you too. I pray you all have a blessed day. Okay, bye.